<laughs> well, take it away, Tom. The floor is yours. Great. Paul, thank you. I, I, I so much appreciate you guys for having me on today. And it's been such a pleasure to be affiliated with you guys for, for so, so many years and to talk about things like the Wor Worship Summit and how um, you know those of us in the live streaming community can share our gifts with those of you that want to be in the live streaming community. Um, in just a few minutes after I'm done with my presentation, Terry Wilhite will come on and talk about communicating with your church in a time of crisis. Um, and then after that, uh, Katie Allred with Church Communications is going to come on and talk about um, building uh, your church in an online community, um, both of which, you know, obviously are key topics. And I hope you'll stick around for that. Basically, in this hour, each one of us has about 20 minutes, and then we're going to go into the, the Zoom room and take questions. Uh, so we probably won't be taking your questions right here. But that doesn't mean you can't ask them. <laughs> so write them down, make sure you get them and you can ask in the Zoom room or you can always contact, contact me directly. I'm going to bring up my lower third here. Right down there is Eastern Shore Broadcasting. That's my company. Um, if you want to go to the website, easternshorebroadcasting.com, you can ask a question there in the contact form and I, I'll, I'll be happy to answer your question um, uh, personally by, by email or we can talk by phone. Basically, I'm a live streaming guy. I've been doing live streaming since since 2007 when we didn't we didn't even know what to call it. Uh, long story on that one. Won't go into that now because I've got a limited amount of time. But I want to talk about how you, if 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 you just woke up this morning and you said, "Oh my gosh, we've got to get our church live streaming this Sunday." Well, today's Thursday. You know, <laughs> the, the clock is ticking. But if you're in that boat, pick up your phone because your phone will do it. You can take your phone and you can log in as, as an administrator on your Facebook account and you can live stream to your church's Facebook page and you can broadcast that all over wherever. And for everybody that's on, that, that likes your church's Facebook page, they will get to see that live stream. You can schedule it in advance or you can do it ad hoc. It's that simple. And I won't go through the process because it, it really is, it really is pretty simple. Um, but one of the questions that a lot of churches are, are coming up with today and yesterday, you know, kind of like, uh, yeah, Easter is in, you know, two and a half weeks. What are we going to do? Let me give you some ideas. If you haven't already decided what you're going to do, let me throw a bunch of ideas at you. And one of them might be a great fit. Uh, one is you can do drive-in church. If there's a big parking lot at your church or next to your church, you can do drive-in church there. I've got one church, the guy called me the other day, and he's got an F, a, a, a miniature FM transmitter, and it transmits about, I don't know, a mile. And so they're picking out a, a band on the FM band that's not being used by, by a local station. And everybody that comes to church can tune their radio of their car into that FM station, and they can hear the service that's taking place in front of them on the other side of the parking lot, maybe on a riser or on a trailer or, you know, whatever else you can do to be up high enough where everybody can see. One of the other strategies using that same kind of drive-in theme is for if you want to drive in and then do the Facebook and let, you know, somebody with a, with a phone or a camera and a PC or, or whatever device you want to use to, to, to live stream to Facebook and then have everybody sitting in the parking lot tuned in to Facebook so that they're there, your, your community, even though you're separated by cars or whatever, we hope you keep that six feet, hope, hope you keep that six feet distance. You, you're still together as a body. And, and, and so you can kind of preserve that for, for traditions where communion is important. You can take communion around car to car, put it on a, Put it on the end of a stick and and hand it into the into the window if if that's what it takes. Um, there are other churches that have been doing live streaming for a while, and they're struggling with you know communion is important with us. How do I do it? At our church last Sunday, um, our priest said, "Okay, you know if you want to do communion, we're going to do communion online because there was nobody at church. Everybody was watching online." He said, "Get a saltine cracker, get some grape juice or or wine, whatever your tradition supports." And, and set it out there and he, and he blessed it. And, you know, you say, okay, well, you know, maybe he's not close enough for that to officially do its job, but uh, you know, our God is a God that is not limited by time and space. <laughs> he can do anything he wants. 
And so he can, he can allow that priest to consecrate that bread and that wine remotely, virtually. Um, if your church wants to really get into this communion thing, you can, you can buy the, the pre-measured little, little teeny cups of, of uh, it's probably grape juice. I don't know that they, they do this with wine, but attached to the top of the cup in cellophane is a little wafer. And you can buy those by the box load. You can have them sent directly to all of the folks in your church that are infirm. That is, they're not coming to church probably ever again. Or people that are uh, virtual members of your church. I've got a friend, Al Bunt, up in Wisconsin. And their average attendance in his church is about 75 on a Sunday. Live people in the seats. But then they've got an online church of people that regularly attend virtually that's the same size, another 75. And so they send them all out a communion kit. Uh, I don't know if they send it out once a month or once a week, however, they, they manage those logistics, but they send it out so that when it comes time in the service, those folks that are attending virtually can have as similar as an experience as possible to those that are there physically. So those are just a few strategies to kind of help you as you're planning your, your Easter worship of a way to, you know, physically get everybody in one place at one time, but still maintain that mandatory distance. And the fact that you're in your cars in a parking lot <laughs> may mean that you're not going to get in trouble with the local authorities. You may want to call the local PD or the, uh, the local sheriff's office or somebody and make sure that that's okay. But I can't imagine that it wouldn't, you know, you're driving down the street in your car. And I would think Easter Sunday could be considered pretty essential, you know, essential, essential to the soul, not necessarily the stomach or the head. Um, part of what I do with live streaming is I build PCs and help folks get online. I represent PC, PTZ Optics. Uh, so when folks are looking for a PTZ camera, I'm able to provide that. I represent vMix, which I think is the world's best live streaming software. Um, I represent Magewell and Yuan, two excellent manufacturers of capture cards. I represent X Keys, which is, a, well, I've got one right here. It's a keyboard that allows me to control my vMix application, uh, in this case, on a 30-foot extension cord. But um, I've got a couple of PCs here with me I wanted to, wanted to show you. Let me, let me pan this, this camera over. Um, this is, it, it's just a desktop. It's nothing fancy, uh, except when it comes time to, to do the inputs. Uh, but this is built to the vMix spec so that it's got the right kind of capture card, the right kind of video card, the right kind of processor, the right kind of RAM. And then we work kind of a little magic. Uh, well, I won't say magic. Uh, my secret sauce of all the tweaks that we do with that PC to, to make it stream. I've got another one here that's in a, uh, in a rack mount format. Yeah, you can see my X keys on top. And this is for folks that need one rack mounted. Uh, I've got another one here and let's see if we can go to that shot real quickly. Yeah, there we go. Uh, that we're, we're, we're basically rebuilding. We've got a whole series of portable PC cases that have been retired. And so you can see one in the background, the black one back there. And so basically we're, we're gutting them and we're repainting the outsides, powder coating the outsides, and then rebuilding them on the inside with uh, a whole new shooting match, a whole new in innards, as it were. Um, and, and that's what we do, and that's what we offer. Our phone's been ringing off a of hook of folks that, that need uh, these types of things. But you also may say, golly, Tom, you know, I just, I just don't know enough to write, answer the right questions. Uh, we do consulting with folks that are, that are ready to do this. And a lot of folks are saying, I had a call from a pastor, um, Tuesday, who said, you know, we've been thinking about this for a while, but we see that this, this thing that we're in is going to extend longer than when we initially planned. And so we need to make a little bit more permanent long-term plan for live streaming. And we want to get the right gear to do that. And I think a lot of folks are kind of in that same position. So if we can help you at Eastern Shore Broadcasting, uh, we would like to, we would like to do that. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a little puzzled at this point because I'm waiting for Terry Wilhite to show up and he's supposed to be here at the studio. He was supposed to be here already and he's, uh, he's not here. So we may have to ad lib and go into, go into his part. Um, let me d divert for just a second and, and talk about live streaming. Um, there are a lot of us that think, oh, you know, live streaming, what, what a great thing to invent. 
And I don't think live streaming was an invention. I think live streaming was a discovery. I think our God, the Lord God Almighty, the creator of the universe, created this technology. And he set it out there for us to discover. Why? <laughs> Maybe exactly for times like this. For times like this, when the body, when the church needs to be able to communicate with each other in a one-to-many situation, live streaming is perfect. In a many-to-many -many situation, you may want to look at a solution like, like Zoom, uh, Zoom conferencing, where you can, have, you can have your whole Bible study online with Zoom conferencing and have six, 16, or 60 people in that same conference with the ability to, to mute everybody, and then they can raise their hand and unmute them and ask questions, have great discussions. Zoom is a great, a great format to do that. And you can combine the one-to-many with the Zoom. Uh, we, we have a lot of folks that are taking the Zoom situation, uh, the Zoom room, as it were, and bringing that into their vMix broadcast and rebroadcasting it. We have other folks who are, who are using vMix to enter into the Zoom as a, uh, a, I guess you would call it a virtual web camera. And they, with that virtual web camera, can then bring in all of their, um, all of their lower thirds, as part of their, their Zoom presentation. And if they are the main speaker in that Zoom presentation, then they can, they can bring in everything that they need. And of course, you, you can share screens through Zoom. Um, you can do a whiteboard through Zoom, all sorts of great features like that that are, are really great. But I believe that this is a divinely ordained technology that we don't need to be afraid of it. Um, it's, it may be unknown to you, and it's something that needs to become known to you. And there, are, the, YouTube is full of videos. Most of them are good. Uh, some of them are, are ones I did that may be a little questionable, but are, are videos where you can go and learn about live streaming, can learn about um, how to get your church online, and you can learn even how to start out with your phone. Um, I see Addison in the chat. Addison, thank you. Ad Addison, the check is in the mail. He said, Tom is the best and super helpful, helped me get my church up and streaming a couple of years ago. And that's the idea. That's the idea. That's part of my passion is helping people, in, especially at times like this, get from point A to point B. Point A being, I, I don't know what to do, uh, to point, a, point B being where Addison is, where he's, he's live streaming. The phone call I hate to get is the call that says, well, you know, we bought this and we, we bought this camera and we bought this PC and we bought this software and, and we, we've got all this. Now, what do we do? <laughs> and they've gotten the cart before the horse. Uh, the very first thing you, you, you say is, what do we want to do? And, and we say, okay, we want to live stream our services. And it would be really nice if we could have a camera shot of, of the pastor preaching and of the choir and then we want to get a, we, we've got a baptistry. And so we want to get a, 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 be able to get a shot of the baptistry. And then occasionally we want to get a shot of the congregation. And so basically you're saying, you're, you're describing the camera shots you need. And then you say, okay, we want to be able to live stream this to our church's uh, website. Well, you can't do that directly. You, you, you've got to have an interim, uh, what, what's called a CDN, a content delivery network that you can send your live stream to. They're going to send it send you a code that you can put in your website that will allow anybody that comes to your website to see, to allow everybody that comes to your website to see what's going on. And the CDN provides the ability to populate the little video player on your website with, with basically your live stream. Uh, you can also stream to, to Facebook. That Facebook is a great way to communicate with your church. It is I, I know you might say that Zuckerberg uh, is, is not a divinely inspired person. And, you know, we can have a great discussion on that. But nevertheless, that technology of Facebook is, is very, very helpful for churches because we can, we can keep our social network um, kind of together even when we're not physically together. So if everybody likes your church's Facebook page, then Whenever you go live, it's going to send all those people an send those people a notice that you're live and, and you can watch. And here's a great little kind of subtle evangelistic tool as part of this. And I mentioned that this in the last worship summit. Um, but if you missed that, let, let's let's review it again. If it, <coughs> excuse me, 
if you have, um, let's just, I'm just going to pick a, pick a number to work with. Let's say you've got a hundred folks that, that are attending a church that are really, uh, they're, they're Facebook fanatics, uh, and they love Facebook. They love to do everything with Facebook. And so you tell them right before church starts, before you, before you mute your cell phone or turn it off, whatever your policy is at church, uh, before you do that, make sure you check in. And even if you're not physically in the church, you can still scroll through and check in as if you were. And oops, I turned my phone on. There we go. Didn't mean to do that. Sorry about that. And there'll be a certain number of people, like whenever I check in, I know some of my old running buddies, you know, they're like, Tom Sinclair's in church. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but a certain number of those are going to want to know, you know, what kind of church is it? I remember that guy from way back when. What kind of church is it that would have a guy like this? I got I, I to gotta see this. And so they're going to go to the church's Facebook page just to, just to have a glimpse. See, what kind of, is, is this a crazy church where they're, you know, bungee jumping for, for Jesus? No, <laughs> no, probably not. But the, the idea is they're going to get, they're going to have an opportunity to go to your church's Facebook page. And if I check in at the beginning of the service, when, when the live stream goes live, then not only do they get to see what my church looks like on the Facebook page, but they get to see that the church is live streaming right then. That's right. And a certain number of those will click on that live stream because they want to see what's going on. I want to see what this church really looks like that would have Tom Sinclair as a member. And the Holy Spirit works in wonderful and mysterious ways. And I will, I'm not a betting man, but if I were, I would bet you that when they tune into that live stream, they're going to hear a word that they needed to hear at that point. And that may be a person that would never, ever darken the door of a church. But by the curiosity of wanting to see what kind of church would accept somebody like Tom Sinclair, they have come into a place where they can hear the word, if just for a moment. And if we're a kingdom church, I mean, all of us together, not just your physical church body in your location, but the all of us as a kingdom church, then it doesn't matter, you know, who gets the glory among us, does it? It doesn't matter who gets the credit. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who plants the seed. It doesn't matter um, who, who harvests the seed. It just matters that it gets done. That's what matters. And so this is a great strategy for very subtle, low-key evangelism to encourage your members to check in on Facebook at the beginning of the service, whether it's an online service or a service that they're physically attending, and then let Facebook do the rest of that. That's the secret sauce. And you may or may not see a result, but that doesn't mean that you stop doing it. I mean, just because a farmer plants a bunch of seeds today and nothing grows by tomorrow, that doesn't mean he doesn't stop planting seeds that he stops planting seeds. He continues to plant seeds because that's what he do, what he does. And if you are, if you are one of those people in your church, that's a seed planter, this is going to be a great strategy for you to magnify your efforts. Um, just a, just a, a real, real shout out at that. Well, um, it looks like I've come to the end of my time and, um, Terry, are you here? I don't think Terry's here. I'm not sure what happened to him. Let me check uh, check text messages here for just a second and see what happened. Um, Uh-oh. Let me know when I can come in. I'll be outside. Got delayed by construction. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. So um, do you guys have something back, back in the studio? Do you have something you can do for like um, 30 seconds while I get Terry in here and get of him situated? Of course, Tom. No problem at all. Okay. All right. So sit tight. We'll be right back. 